But that said, I get wanting to have a format constantly changing so you get ideas for new things. Instigator needs an if you cast it. Uh, oh, Inquisitor Captain? I've, I've heard that Inquisitor Captain is being awkward in Historic, which I can totally believe, but it's not even... I don't think it's even a good deck, or... I don't think there's any really playable decks playing Inquisitor Captain in Alchemy right now. Hey, Mifet! Thanks for the raid! You join us trying to make Is It Work, and me trying to figure out my land drops. I think I'm probably supposed to hold Jorai Disruption so if my opponent tries to sack Shambling Gas to get a treasure, I can kill, counter the... What's the name of the two-minute sacrifice -y thingy? I forget. Oh. But anyway, yeah, earlier topic. I don't think Inquisitor Captain is part of any good decks in Alchemy right now, so although a nerf might be important... Oh, this is sad. I can't actually copy this. Oh well, I can set up to copy it. Um, so a nerf to the card might be necessary and historic, but I don't think Alchemy. Deadly Dispute, that's the one. Yeah. But they decided not to do that because it would make sense not to do that. No! I didn't have faith! Ah, uh, if I'd played the mountain instead of the Seagate Restoration last turn, then top decking this mountain meant that we could have Galvanic Iteration Unexpected Windfall on turn four, which, you know, it's pretty fun. Uh, but if I'd missed on exactly untap mountain, we would have not been able to cast the Unexpected Windfall that cost four mana, without paying three life, and that seemed like a bad idea against a brushstroke deck. Oh well. It's not like we're punished, we just... we're getting our faces rubbed in the denied value. More brush strokes. That could actually start to be a problem. It is rather a lot of burn damage. I feel like Sanguine Brush Stroke in like a couple months' time is probably gonna get memed in the same way as Siege Rhino. It's the card that the first one isn't that brutal, but they really add up. Ooh. Hello, hand. Hello. Okay. I'm complaining about my opponent drawing two sanguine brushstrokes over there, and here I am about to just turn five, cast three unexpected windfalls. Do you side any exile red cards like Crush the Week in anticipation of the Brush Stroke list? Um, so we did just add two copies of Crush the Week as the board wipe of choice in the sideboard. Um, you know what, let's do this now. I haven't actually play-tested them yet, but I expect that conceptually it makes sense for them to be good. What do we think of Kunio's Esper list? I think that that is probably the de facto best deck in the format right now, and it is the one that I am trying to target while brewing. It, it lines up extremely well against all of the other popular decks that currently exist until it forces them out. Oh, cool. That went well. Okay, yeah, you can have a Fell Stinger opponent. I'm cool with that. Um, I also think that Esper list is going to be popular enough that that makes it worth attempting to target. Not necessarily worth attempting to target a deck that is the best deck, but nobody will play. <laughs> what is the advantage of Mono Black Brushstroke? So Mono Black, as opposed to other versions of Brushstroke, tends to fit in more of the one-drop sacrifice fodder, and tends to be more of a mid-range deck that tries to grind out the opponent as a result. It also plays more snow stuff and usually more Planeswalkers. It has more targets for Felstinger. And it, it generally grinds into the late game better. The flaw with that is that it usually has fewer aggressive creatures. 
which I think makes it worse against the controlled X as a result, because it doesn't do a very good job of clocking them. As you can see here, where our opponent is just totally doing their thing, and we don't care at all, even a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I see. How much? Three, three, four? Yeah. Is it worth me discounting Auron's Epiphany? No, because if I still want to cast all these unexpected windfalls, then... I guess I'm probably only doing two unexpected windfalls, right? Yeah, I think that's the case. Okay. Two unexpected windfalls here, and then an Auron's Epiphany next turn. Hoping the opponent doesn't Give me the hand-hate spell. Maybe I could have foretold the Aurons if I need to play around that and just had less mana. That doesn't seem like a good idea. I guess I could have also just taken three extra turns. I probably should have done that. I had enough mana that that was probably good. Weren't we supposed to foretell? Yeah, I think I was trying to waste fewer treasure tokens so that I can Galvanic plus Unexpected Windfall, but I think that that's a move I'm supposed to make when I have one treasure token, not a move I'm supposed to make when I have seven treasure tokens. But I have divide by zero, so I don't think I can get punished too much here. Famous last words. We take some burn damage, as one does. Okay. Fun doesn't do anything, so we're going to grab Anic Iteration and Unexpected Windfall. And I guess I'm probably going to ditch this pathway. Maybe I needed more red sources? I probably don't need more red sources. Plans, not terribly useful. Spells, slightly useful. Okay, we go to our turn. Ooh, see, Restoration seems fun. So how many copies of Allrun's Epiphany do we get to cast this turn? Let's count. One. Two. Three. Three. And four? I believe four. Alright, and now we see if we can find a way to win the game with four Allrin's Epiphanies. I think we can succeed at this. What do you think, opponent? They seem to think that we can't. All right, we're going to have to demonstrate that that's not quite the case. So for starters, how about I draw, like, 12 cards? That seems a good idea. All right, plenty of cards left in the deck. All right, there's a burn down the house. I don't think I want to cast that, or at least not to remove anything. Let's maximize the amount of mana we have available, because I don't think I'm all of the Storm giants -ing next turn. Opponent, I would like to remove your Blood Artist. Cool. I would love to draw a Fading Hope. That seems excellent. Perfect. Wonderful. Stellar. And then how many three Galvanics used? That makes it kind of harder to burn down the house for lethal, in a sense. I don't need to have a hasty Geist Channeler next turn. Okay, now that we got one Blood Artist off the board, I think I can start attacking with Geist Channeler. Opponent agrees I'm allowed to attack with Geist Channeler. Mm. Two more turns? 
Alright, so let's actually play this guy's channeler then. We're gonna just kind of burn down the house and we're just gonna start making a ton of three threes. We're gonna fading hook the blood artist. Hey! Alias V! Thank you for the raid! Ooh, more removal spells. Love it. Okay. How'd the stream go? Tell me all about it. And we're gonna make some devils. Uh, you join us in the middle of taking four turns and trying to figure out how we're gonna kill the opponent while doing that. It's fun. Everybody's having fun. I promise they were not bullying the opponent too much. They're the ones who chose not to concede. <laughs> uh, okay, mascot exhibition probably does damage. And I guess we can attack with everybody. The opponent could choose to activate Faceless Haven if they wanted to. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we get one more turn after this, so... I guess I'm probably supposed to try to do 14 damage with all the Storm Giants. We still have a counter spell up. We have Fading Hope to bounce the Faceless Haven when they try to animate that to block. They can also just choose not to block. That works too. That works. Mm. Okay. I don't see the need to go shields down in any way. And I would like to activate Hall of the Storm Giants again. Opponent, you are free to activate Faceless Haven if you should so like. It does sort of almost look like it's going to avoid lethal. You know what? Opponent, I'm actually willing to let you block the Hall of the Storm Giants here. I'm feeling generous. Fading Hope would make this lethal, but I don't think that's cool lethal. I think cool lethal... Does this work? Yeah, I think cool lethal is that we abrade our own devil token. <laughs> that's better lethal for sure. Ah, barely got there. We might have been in trouble if we'd only taken three extra turns. <laughs> okay, so what do we want here? What do we want? What do we want? I don't think this is a matchup where I'm super in love with Fading Hope. I think I like Crush the Weak, and I do think that I like Leer. Do I care about any of these other cards? So I guess the moral of this story is that if you take four turns in a row, you usually win the game. <laughs> True, we did take five in a row. We took four extra turns in a row. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I don't think I bother playing Holebreaker Rory here. Although more behold the multiverses instead of a braid is sort of interesting. I do have to fight Drain. I guess a braid hits like Blood Artist. Eh, you know what? Who needs removal? Opponent's not an aggro deck. I'm just gonna draw cards. That's the game plan. It, it is true that Wilderness Reclamation was essentially just a four mana enchantment that gave you an extra time walk every turn for every one you had in play. And when phrased that way, that sounds like a pretty good card. This hand is pretty awful, but we're going to keep, and then we're just going to draw a Geist Channeler, and everything's going to be fine. Nothing will ever be not fine. Ooh, Baron Bloodcaster. Okay. Opponent has found lots of cards that do things. Most of those things are poke us for tiny amounts of damage. Opponent plays a Fell Stinger. Okay, opponent is curved out. That's like, actually respectable. Hmm. Event iteration, not a land, but... If we divide by zero something, then we find 
Environmental Sciences, that gives us a red source and we cast Behold the Multiverse off of it, so that's kind of reasonable. If we find an untapped land naturally, I have to consider whether I would prefer to just Galvanic Iteration Environmental Sciences. I'm sorry, what are you? Oh, I'm allowed to just discard cards instead of paying life? Okay. Sure. Yeah, I guess I'll, like, discard Aldrin's Epiphany. Seems fair. Ugh. Well, at least now I can discard Galvanic Iteration without too much concern. So we get a red source. We get to behold the multiverse. Take a little bit of damage. Sure. I would like you to stop playing threats now, opponent. My life total is a resource I would prefer to not have to think about. Ooh. Our kitty on the side had a big stretch. Alright, so they found a one drop. Which means they get to make a treasure and a blood token and draw two cards. Moderately inconvenient. And a witch. So it'd be a good time to find that three mana board wipe that I really hope we sideboarded in. Alternatively, we could play lands. I do like lands. And I do want to draw two lands. But if I scry one of these lands to the bottom then there's a better chance that we find our sixth land and something to do next turn. Cool. Clear counts. Would I like to discard a card? Yes, I would like to discard Galvanic Iteration. That's fine by me. Oh, and another Leer. All right. Hmm. Maybe that's good. Probably not. Uh, but we got a Leer to block Cursebound, which I suppose... Discarding Auron's Epiphany feels a lot less bad when you have Leers in your deck, but... Wow. Invert Rasp? I guess that's not totally unreasonable to keep in. Uh, go blank. That's really annoying. I guess I'm discarding my Leer now, and I guess I'm discarding a Discover the Formula, and I'm hoping that I draw a land. Mm, inconvenient amount of hand hate occurring here. And here I was thinking that I had a decent amount of resources. I'm not finding a board wipe at any very near juncture is kind of a problem. So I have to discard a card, which we're going to make into Galvanic Iteration. We're going to draw an untapped land. That's not a good card to have drawn. Okay, Unexpected Windfall, discards Discover the Formula, which I don't feel excited about. Play a land. Alright, so the game plan is discard Unexpected Windfall to the Torment of Scarabs. Draw an untapped land. Oh, untapped land actually isn't good enough. Interesting. Three. Okay, that's good. Sanguine Brushstroke is three burn damage. Hmm. Huh. Do we feel the abrades are necessary? Or the fading hopes? Hmm. In one sense, my hand wasn't very good because it was all expensive cards and no ramp. And that kind of fell apart to hand hate, in a sense. It's weird to have both lost because we got massively hit by a ton of card disadvantage when our hand was all card advantage, which is what's supposed to be fine against stuff like GoBlank. But it was too expensive when we couldn't actually cast it. Simultaneously, we died. But that was the opponent mostly curving out 
fairly excellently. I still don't know if Raid is good. Trying to figure out the right balance for card advantage in this deck is still something I'm struggling with, and I feel like I'm probably boarding too heavily into card advantage. I think I'd rather play a Braid than Fading Hopes. I probably don't want this many burn down the houses against them. I think that might be where I shave some of my overall average CMC. Ah, uh, this is an interesting hand. Okay. How are we handling the Seagate Restoration? Duress. I assume that takes Behold the Multiverse here. But I do think that hand hate spells like Duress are one of the reasons that I'm a little concerned about Geist Channeler strategies in general. And I do wonder if perhaps I should be trying to build this deck in a way that isn't really about Geist Channeler. It is just kind of dicey. Like, even if I play Geist Channeler here and discount Seagate Restoration, I'm still just in trouble if my opponent plays hand hate spells from here on out. Kind of just hoping they don't have any. Yeah, but they do have some. Oh, cool. They didn't go for Seagate Restoration. Bad in the sense that that indicates that they probably have more Hand-Aid spells. Also bad in the sense that my Seagate Restoration isn't good right now, because I've gotten hit by Hand-Aid spells. I really need to find another Behold the Multiverse. Discover the formula, huh? Mm, okay. I probably should attack into Blood Artist because it can't attack me. And I don't need to block it. Oh, that's worth noting. Uh huh. Even mind rots here are brutal. This is not a matchup where Seagate Restoration is a particularly good card. Yeah, that's a brutal mind rot. Okay, Seagate Restoration gone. Our card advantage is just way too expensive. And Geist Channeler is not helping against this kind of hand hate. I don't know. Maybe we can't do a Geist Channeler thing. Maybe that's not the strategy we're supposed to be going for. But my opponent isn't actually doing anything either, so I guess that's cool. I would like you to not draw two cards, opponent, since you apparently don't have anything to do. Do I want to play teachings? Probably. I'm going to hope they don't just like play a creature out here and then I draw some 6-drop I can't cast. Because that's going to make not taking environmental sciences look real silly. We have 12 cards that don't do anything by themselves. Yeah, that's not ideal, per se. This, however, was an extremely ideal turn and now I think we win. <sighs> but, yeah. Eh. I'm scared that Geist Chandler is not getting there, but I don't know that the deck is good enough without that. It's, it's tough. It's tough. I don't even know that like Geist Chandler is excellent against control. Because all these same problems apply there, which sort of means that the position I'm in is... What does that make Geist Channeler actually good against? 
it's kind of an has a lot of the same flaws that I rant about in Dragons. It is a good anti-aggro card, though. It blocks really well and ramps you out into busted fast starts that you need to have. No, my discover the formula. Wait. Do you have a way to kill Leer opponent? Because, like, I still have a Leer in play. Okay, you have a way to kill Leer. Captain Meetup Massacre against me. That's kind of surprising. Ah, goodness, goodness, goodness. All right. More card draw. Definitely don't want those two. Fertel cards! Fertel cards! Keep them secret. <sighs> oh, well, well, I guess Crush the Week is good against that. Can I braid it, Planeswalkers? No, this was before removal spells were allowed to be good. Hmm. Pretty sure Geist Channeler is just supposed to go in decks that run more cards that do something by themselves. Yeah, that's an option. Here, when a creature gets exiled, right? Yeah, okay. So let's crush the weak so that we can kill the Lolf if we happen to top deck and untap land. Sanguine Brushstroke. That makes a chump blocker. Don't love that. And Faceless Haven's also a blocker. Okay, we do hit an untapped land, and we actually foretold Auron's Epiphany, so we get to kill the Loth with birdies. Auron's Epiphany, doing the thing that it kind of does in standard. You love to see it. Sort of. I guess I might as well drain my opponent. Sure, why not? They can't actually attack with Faceless Haven if I hold up all the Storm Giants here. And like, I'm technically missing out on a land drop by not unexpected windfalling, but I'm gonna go with denying them the attack with the Faceless Haven's worth that. Yeah, Keys tends to... It's not as easy to get two for one by hand hate. Ugh. So I can Unexpected Windfall here to develop two treasures and possibly find an instant speed spell to play in response to this go blank. But in doing so, I lose three life. Three life isn't that big of a deal. I'll just accept my treasures. Ooh. I guess eh, it's not the best cards in the world. Alright, opponent. You get to Faceless Haven me. Very well. Ooh, the whole multiverse seems fun. Okay. I could attack with Baseless Haven, or with all the Storm Giants here. Again, I think representing the ability to stop the opponent from attacking with Baseless Haven is probably slightly more valuable. Last time we slightly had something worth doing in response to that. This time around... Ah, Fell Stinger's annoying. Do I have any real clean answers to it? I suppose I could hit a removal spell for Blood Artist. I don't know if I have many of those in my deck. Whoa, don't want lands. Nope. Thank you. Very good on those. Burn down the house. It's not clean. And once again, the cost of that was taking three damage. Not good, not good, not good. Just not doing a very good job of getting up to critical mass of cards that do things, huh? Ooh, Nelly! Yeah, they just... Real comboed off, huh? Oh, 
<laughs> All right, I'm at one. And they have a Blood Artist in play, and I can't actually do anything. So there's no physical way I can stop them from killing me. Where does that leave me? That leaves me with basically not being able to interact at all, huh? Hmm. 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 Well, Darren Bloodcaster, do you trigger? Yes. When you die, you also trigger. All right. Well, I guess it was a good attempt, but they found more card advantage than us. Wait. Oh, it's okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> We're doing another one with the old list then. <laughs> Before we end up changing it. I should have let on Frostboil Snarl there. No reason not to. I forgot. We didn't change the is it list. We made a copy. And so I needed to actually change the deck we had selected. Okay, so the white-black mid-range version of this deck. Sure, sure, sure. That does not make Fading Hope terribly useful, but Shambling Ghasts are not crazy aggressive. Okay, you have infinity tiny creatures, opponent. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with my mana yet. But do you have anything to do with your mana? I mean, I guess this does add up to one three-power creature attacking me every turn. It's kind of something. My mana is really good right now. <laughs> okay, let's see. I don't really want Kaya to resolve. That sounds kind of inconvenient. But I have, like, infinity cards, so I guess I'm just grabbing Mascot Exhibition. Now, ideally, we draw Galvanic Iteration this turn, or discover the formula. And if we do that, everything should be great. We draw Geist Channeler. Does that do anything? <sighs> Opponent didn't attack with Eye Twitch. Why? Afraid of something with haste? Goldspan Dragon, I guess? Probably. I shouldn't be playing Goldspan, right? There's no reason to do that. Right, it's Unexpected Windfall. See if we find card advantage. We don't. This is slightly awkward still. Ooh, that's pretty planes. I like that planes. Okay, Kaya upticks, threatening to minus seven at some point, which is kind of inconvenient. I twitch as a counter on it. We are probably happy to just bounce I twitch to make that annoying counter go away. Alrin's Epiphany. Okay. We're going to say that Alrin's Epiphany is a card that technically exists, I guess. I think I'm just going to make a bunch of Devil Tokens and attack Kaya, and then foretell Alrin's Epiphany. If the opponent board wipes to clear our Devils, then that gets us to the point where we presumably can ping Kaya down with bird tokens from Alrin's Epiphany and the Devil Pings. I twitch, opponent upticks on it, then plays me. Oh, not a board wipe. Okay. Alrighty. Whenever a creature you control dies, active player, non active player. Hmm. So my devil tokens don't do a good job of pinging down lol, unfortunately. 
Still really light on the card advantage front. All right, let's start by swinging everybody at Lolf. See how that plays out. They have to block everything. They lost three creatures, so Lolf goes up to four. They get one token. All right, I think the plan is to kill Lolf. We really gotta draw some card advantage here. Unexpected windfall works. Sort of. At least gets us closer. Didn't really work. Okay. That spirit token. Don't want to draw a land. We're gonna find card advantage at some point. I promise that'll happen. I can play mascot exhibition here. If we do, <sighs> then board wipe is pretty rough. If I don't, then I'm just not really capable of answering the Kaya, though, so I think I have to do this. Holding on to the island, because I want to be able to discard it if we find another unexpected windfall. Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> hey, Chris, saw your metagame breakdown on YouTube. Good stuff. Hey, thanks. Glad you enjoyed it. I hope that it winds up being helpful. The fact that the opponent hasn't immediately slammed a board wipe is kind of reassuring and giving me hope. Never mind. Wait, they did that for three. Oh, it was the shambling gas. We'll choose to ping it down. Sure. Yeah, okay. Well, this is what I was weak against, but I don't have enough card draw to do anything else. Yep, my life total's real low. They got some meat hook in play. Yep, 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 lots of creatures. Okay, discover the formula. We drew card advantage. What do we do with it? Alright, okay. Well, these are actual magic cards. Probably should have played Seagate Restoration tapped and then just played the Leer next turn and had more mana to work with. I don't really see the need for my opponent to get more 1-1s. One Yeah, I played the island, but if I played the Seagate Restoration instead and not gotten attached to the idea of casting it, then I could play the island next turn to have the untapped land. Two mascot exhibitions. Wow. Oh, Galvanic Iteration, you know how to tempt me so. You're not a good play right now, but you could be. Oh, I should have checked my graveyard. Was I supposed to go by an iteration before casting the Leer? Hmm. Maybe. Probably? So... I guess Fading Hope is a way to remove cards without triggering Meat Hook Massacre. So 
So now we're playing this tapped because I need the land drop. And I regret that I just don't have one extra mana this turn because of my earlier mistake. We're hoping that doesn't turn out to be relevant. Gotcha. So we are targeting down Lear. If I had one more mana, I could Galvanic Iteration, Divide by Zero, two of their things, Fading Hope, one of their things, Fading Hope, Leer. But I don't have enough mana to do that, so instead... I think we Divide by Zero, the Professor of Symbology, because I want to take less damage. <laughs> Opponent, I didn't... I didn't divide by zero the Kaya trigger. <laughs> okay. This doesn't change anything. Uh, but that's very cute. Okay. So let's Fading Hope the 1-1. One, one. Ah, that's a bummer. That's inconvenient. Okay, so I'm going to 3... I don't think removing the Shambling Ghast is to my benefit at all. Let's get that sweet, sweet, sweet environmental sciences. That precious, lovely life gain. Yup, yup, yup. Environmental Sciences, gain some life, play a land, play the Leer. Do I Environmental Sciences again, or do we assume that four life is enough here? Hmm. They have Introduction to Annihilation to make me lose my Leer. Which, where does that leave me? I would... I guess I can just Galvanic Iteration, Unexpected Windfall at Sorcery Speed, and then cast Environmental Sciences, can't I? Because Unexpected Windfall does that thing where it makes mana. Okay, cards that do things. I dig that. And... Dun, 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 dun. I suppose I'm just going to choose to gain 8 life here. Is that... Is that truly the best thing I can do? Or do I... I could keep these treasures around. I probably want to keep Galvanic Iteration around. I think that means that I play the environmental sciences here, sacking 2 treasures to gain 2 life, and thin the deck a little bit. That's sort of valuable. But I think I choose to not use up the Galvanic now. But that should put me safely out of range of the opponent. Do I choose to abrade an eye twitch? <sighs> Don't like the idea of using up treasures, but I do like the idea of taking less damage. I am going to choose to take less damage. Besides, how many more lessons can the opponent actually have in their sideboard to go snag? I think they probably should have Kaya upticked on Shambling Gas there. It's a lower value, so I might not have actually tried to use a removal spell on it. Spellbinder, that's very large and also makes Discover the Formula more expensive, which is inconvenient. And the Learn actually gave them a cheaper way to answer the Leer, so I guess I look silly because that made me killing the Flyer work out in their benefit. They probably should have grabbed the Necrotic Fumes with an earlier Learn, but... 
That's still me making an error either way. Alrighty, Lear gone. Draw is not helpful. Discover the formula. I would like you to hit something useful. Burn down the house in this situation. Close to useful, but not quite there. Am I going to play a 5-mana board wipe on Elite Spellbinder? Is that acceptable in any way? Going to 2 is not acceptable. Which I think means that I have to divide by 0 that Spellbinder, don't I? I think I ought to do that at sorcery speed, because I think I'm looting from hand rather than getting the card that isn't super useful right now. And I think I'm jamming Hall of the Storm Giants, because I'm kind of close to potentially playing multiple take an extra turn spells. Elite Spellbinder makes Discover the Formula cost more again. It does make us sad. All right, have we already used one time warp, but not the other one? We did draw galvanic iteration, which means if we found a way to get an extra turn and then top decked Alrin's Epiphany, we'd probably win. Now if I were to burn down the house, where does that put us? Puts us at two. The opponent doesn't appear to have any direct way to do damage to us other than Meat Hook Massacre but most of their hand is not Sacrifice Outlets, and the things that make creatures are much too expensive to play alongside Sacrifice Outlets. Burn Down the House also kills the Kaya. So if I spend three mana to copy Discover the Formula, that leaves me with four mana. Okay, I think I can do that. No. Yes, four mana. Which lands are getting highlighted is kind of hard to see here. Okay, Geist Channeler is a ritual. So we did not necessarily... find an extra turn spell, but we do have lots of cards. Oh, right, Spellbinder is going to hand, and they're getting a 1-1. One, one. That's inconvenient. Especially because my divide by 0 did not turn out to cost 1 mana. It costs 2. <sighs> so if they have a sack outlet for Spellbinder, I die? I don't think I can do anything about that. Not finding a bounce spell here kinda hurts. Alright, we wanna lose Geist Channeler probably and a land. Spellbinder says the opponent, sure. Oh, should I have Jwari Disruption to that? I don't think they have exactly a 4-mana or 5-mana sack outlet. Watch me be wrong on that. No, okay, 2-mana, so it didn't matter. Yeah, I figured if they top-decked a sacrifice outlet to kill me, then it wasn't going to get interacted with by Jari Disruption there, but I probably still should have sacked the treasure to Jari Disruption, the Spellbinder, just in case it played around the most technically possible things. <sighs> this 
So we want Crush the Weak, we want Leer, we want Beholds. Didn't really love Fading Hope. Weren't sure about the idea of burn down the house. Probably didn't want to braid. Just have to try to fight through all the hand hate. Oh, right. I was wondering for most of that first game why we weren't drawing expressive iterations. And it's because we <laughs> didn't successfully submit the new deck. Right. That makes sense. Plenty of sense. <laughs> uh. Okay. This is not a terrible start if we find Galvanic Iteration. Professor of Symbology is a card the opponent can play. Sure, sure, sure. We're fine with that. Whoa. Okay. Island. Not what I was expecting this to turn into. Opponent is doing something creative, then. That makes me suddenly scared of Geist Channeler, opponent. How come you're doing me like this? Because I'm kind of worried you're going to have Disdainful Stroke. You know what, I'm so worried you're going to have Disdainful Stroke that I should probably Sorcery Speed this Windfall. This is the part where they play, like, the party Spell Pierce and really get me. <laughs> Imagine if they sideboard an island. I imagine if you're going to play an island like that, it's probably a good idea to make it the main deck island. The only time you really sideboard land is with aggro decks that want to increase their curve post-board, in my experience. Bottom is to land drop, so... I think our plan here, then, is going to be... Oh, yeah. Well, let's see what you want to do with this Spellbinder opponent. Because I kind of feel like you're probably going to take Seagate Restoration, but now you're tapped out. So I just get to, like, make... Oh. Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't think taking Unexpected Windfall was a good idea. Because, like, I can still cast Unexpected Windfall here. So instead of making the Seagate Restoration cost two more, they removed one treasure. And two more is usually more than one, I think? Essentially. Wow, we've drawn every unexpected windfall. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to like draw seven cards. See where that goes. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. I like where this is headed. We have about twice as much mana as our opponent, and approximately twice as many cards. Unfortunately, our life total is a little less than... twice as... half as much? Something like that. Oh, we do get to crush the weak here, and that's probably fun. And then we get to cast, like, three unexpected windfalls, and that'll also likely be fun. And then we're going to just take a lot of turns. So many turns. Yeah, that pseudo Boros aggro deck was the one I was thinking of that did that. Although I recall... Um, uh, somewhere around, what was it, Hour of Devastation standard, there were a number of mono-red decks that would frequently sideboard into more lands, and stuff like Treasure Map and random 4 and 5 drop mid-range red creatures to try to beat the mirror. That was a weird metagame where Mono Red was the only deck that existed and then Teamer Energy was the only deck that beat that. 
Ooh, spicy. Okay. All right, opponent, you win. I'm not going to unexpected windfall this turn. The fun has ended. Guess I'm gonna have to like galvanic iteration time walk. That's so boring, opponent. Why have you foisted me into such a boring normal world? All right, two extra turns. Let's put as many things to the board as we can. Or I could resolve two Discover the Formulas. That sounds a lot more fun than resolving two Burn Down the Houses and doing, what, like 12 damage? Nah, 12 damage. We're not about that 12 damage life. We can do better than that. Probably. I don't know. I mean, like, we can put so many cards in hand that we make it impossible to figure out what we're playing. That also sounds cool. Well, we didn't hit a Galvanic Iteration there. That's kind of surprising. Okay, then... Let's figure out the right way to do this. The Geist Channeler. Discover the formula. Cast Discover the formula. There's an Orin's Epiphany, which we can make cheaper. So let's make that a 4-mana Epiphany, and let's make that a 2-mana Mascot Exhibition, and let's cast the Take an Extra Turn spell. Twenty-one cards in deck, and I could draw fifteen cards. That's really tempting. But all right, so let's Geist Channeler. Let's make a zero mana mascot exhibition. Let's play a zero mana mascot exhibition. And let's play a two mana Leer. Let's play a zero mana mascot exhibition. All right, and we're gonna hold up six copies. No, I'm sorry, I don't have enough blue... Oh, yeah, yeah, I do have enough blue sources with Unexpected Windfall. Cool. So we're holding up, uh, I think, seven copies of Divide by Zero, which I'm hoping is going to be enough to stop our opponent from having a board wipe. <laughs> I had another Geist Channeler, but I didn't have enough blue sources to use it that turn where I was... Well, that third turn in a row where I was going off. <laughs> Uh, this deck gets really fun when Geist Channeler copies one mana and then or costs, gets discounted by one mana, becomes one mana cost, and turns into a ritual. <laughs> uh, opponent wants to play Test of Talents nonsense, huh? What are we actually boarding into Malevolent Hermit then? Am I that silly? I'm gonna cut Burn Down the Houses. Who needs that? Am I proud of that? Absolutely. That's why I'm playing this deck. That was the entire point. <laughs> uh, can you test the talents on test of talents? Yes, you can. Ah, the plan to board into Malevolent Hermit seemed a lot more clever when we had hypothetical blue mana to go along with it. Hmm. No, not terribly sold on that. Also not terribly sold on this, but we're going to keep it. Mm. Mm. All right, we'll ship an unexpected windfall. Oh, all we got to do is draw lands and not get hit by hand hate. And not get clocked particularly quickly. All right, we drew the most expensive, least useful spell on our deck. That's a good start. Highly auspicious. <sighs> Alright, we drew a land that was very good, but it was also tapped, so we don't get to foretell behold the multiverse to hit our third land. That's a little concerning. 
Okay, wait. Now I'm kind of curious. And because I don't want to pay attention to whether or not we make this third land. Let's talk about the word auspicious. So is like the word root of that supposed to be something like auspices? Like, is that the study of birds specifically? Like trying to... No, that's augury. What's an auspice? Uh, I would like to lose life on it, thank you. Hey! Never didn't have it. You'll love to see it. Do we foretell the whole of the multiverse, or do we hold up divide by zero? I kind of feel like I probably just divide by zero that lantern before my opponent makes me lose more life, which would be inconvenient. I don't really want to lose more life. We're going to grab environmental sciences. An auspice is someone who is suspicious. Is that true? Oh, an auspice is any kind of a prophetic thing. So augury is trying to tell the future by reading the flights of birds so that would be a form of auspice? Mm, okay, okay. I wish I had gotten rid of this crush the week for keeping the second unexpected windfall, now that my mana has turned out to be perfect because I never didn't have it. Also, we definitely did keep a one lander and then drew three lands, so it does feel good to be good at magic. <laughs> In the meantime, we're not taking terribly much damage. I'm not going to jam Unexpected Windfall unless my opponent is kind enough to tap out. They don't, so knowing that the opponent's probably going to test to Talents this, we'll throw out a bowl. Yeah. Unfortunate. We did our best. Hmm. We attempt to continue to make land drops. I think I should probably foretell Crush the Weak. Interesting that it only removes the cards that ha could have been foretold. It doesn't remove the cards that are incapable of being foretold from being visible by our opponent. It strikes me as rational. I just find it a little rude. Oh. <laughs> uh... Opponent, I thought you were so into that idea of a Turgrid's Lantern. What happened? Malevolent Hermit? Oh, they're heavy on this blue mana stuff, huh? Opponent, Malevolent Hermit was supposed to be my thing. Alright, well, how about your Hermit goes away? So much for my plan to Galvanic Iteration Unexpected Windfall. <laughs> They're really willing to sack a treasure to put their own hermit in the graveyard. Okay. I don't actually have any counter spells, so I don't know if that's great, but... Sure, sure, why not? I probably should have played Lear first so it was uncounterable. Then I would have killed the Professor of Symbology for free. I'm gonna call that... Only a minor mistake that's incredibly unlikely to be relevant. You know what? Maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe I tricked my opponent into sacrificing the treasure. Maybe that's what happened. Well, sort of killed their creature either way. I guess I paid a life for it. Alright, Galvanic Iteration, discarding what? Probably not Allrin's Epiphany, although discarding Galvanic Iteration hurts. Alright, let's make some mana, draw some cards. Woo! Drew more Galvanic Iterations. Drew more Allrin's Epiphanies. Alright, you do enjoy seeing it. Let's play a Geist Channeler, make Allrin's Epiphany cost less next turn. It's kind of like foretelling Allrin's Epiphany. And then, like, I could foretell the Allrin's Epiphany. 
that doesn't seem like a great idea. Now, mind you, playing this guy's channeler was a super bad idea, because now I just lose if they play the spell that makes me discard two cards. But I don't think they're playing that alongside Turgrid, right? Wouldn't that not synergize with Turgrid? Oh well. Go blank. That's the one. Okay, so three, two... Oh. Did the Spellbinder mean that I can't take two extra turns in a row? Or three extra turns in a row, rather? Oh wait, no, I can. I can, right? I just did math wrong. No, six, right? Wait. Three, two, six. Three, two, six. Three, two, six is not enough, not enough, not enough. Do I want to play the Galvanic Iteration from hand or use an extra treasure? I feel like using an extra treasure is slightly better on the off chance we draw a Windfall. The Benevolent Geist is an inconvenient amount of damage. Do I sack a treasure to double discover the formula here with the more expensive Galvanic Iteration? No. Although it would be nice to have two two-mana Galvanic Iterations instead of two three-mana Galvanic Iterations in the graveyard. Is the treasure worth that? Yeah, it probably is. Timer. That is true. We actually do have to win. I should probably pay attention to that. Alright, discover the formula. Hit me a spell that I can play to the board as a land. Yeah, good work. Success. Alrighty, and we get to Galvanic Iteration, and we get to Unexpected Windfall, and we get to discard a Crush the Weak. And we draw a land, and we draw a snarl, we have four, eight, ten mana, five mana, so two, and two, and we're going to take three extra turns. Are we playing magic? Well... The opponent's hope is that we can't find a way to kill them in the next six minutes, so I think we might have tricked them into letting us sit here and play magic for a while. Hopefully they don't concede anytime soon. And we're gonna play a Leer. And we're gonna Galvanic. And then we're gonna Windfall. Discarding Windfall. We have two extra turns after this still. I think the second I play this Hall of the Storm Giants, they're going to concede. Uh, let's crush the weak. Let's play Malevolent Hermit. Ooh, no, better. Let's play Geist Channeler and make Discover the Formula cost two. And then let's play Discover the Formula. We got how many cards? 18 cards? Alright, let's play Discover the Formula again. And let's play a Geist Channeler. And let's make something. Let's make this Discover the Formula cost two. Still got 15 cards in deck. Discard four cards. We're going to go with Mountain, Discover, Disruption, Windfall. Wasn't discarding Hermit better? Eh, maybe. But, like, I can play these as threats. And another threat. And another threat. 
and then we ping the opponent for one, and then we ping the opponent for one, <laughs> and then we swing. Uh oh, am I one mana short? Oh no 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 wait. Okay, I'm not gonna divide by zero their meat hook massacre. I'm gonna divide by zero my own geist channeler, and then I'm not one mana short. And we go get mascot exhibition, and then we replay this one mana geist channeler, <laughs> and then we decrease the cost on mascot exhibition to five, and then we play mascot exhibition for five. <laughs> They could have been flying threats. I think that they are essentially flying threats in that they are unblockable. I probably should have remembered to activate all of the storm giants there. I think that's still lethal though. <laughs> still lethal indeed. <sighs>